Now what this will do is these are carbon canisters on there uh -huh. and they will filter out particulates. This is peak moment. We are living at a peak of human innovation, information, wealth and health. But we're also at a peak of population and consumption with rising temperatures and declining resources fueled by cheap oil and gas. Peak Moment Television, bringing you examples of positive responses to energy decline and climate change through local community action. Hi, welcome to Peak Moment. I'm Junea Donaldson. If you and your family had to evacuate, there's a hurricane, there's a, there's a flood, there's a wildfire. If you had to evacuate and be away from your home, would you be prepared to do that in just a short few hours? That's what we're going to talk about today. My guest is Matt Stein, the author of When Technology Fails. Matt, thanks for joining me. Thank you so much for having me on today. One of the chapters in your book is about just that, emergency preparation. That's right. right. Emergency preparation, you know, you never know when you might need it. Yeah. And if you happen to need it, you thank God you took a few hours to put together your kit. And you know, when you have to evacuate, it might be two minutes. So. One of the things in my book that I talk about is a 72-hour grab-and-run kit, something that you can grab, throw on your back, throw on the back of your car, and be out of there. So give me a tour of your kit. Okay. 72 hours. That, gives, that takes care of people for three days, four days, something right. like that? 72 hours is three days. I mean, I encourage everyone to have at least two weeks of spare food on hand in their mm -hmm. house, mm -hmm. but your 72-hour kit covers everything that you and your family needs for at least three days. Okay. That's a critical time when any time a disaster hits, major disaster, usually the authorities are just over, over, overwhelmed. Sure. They can't handle sure. it. You're on sure. your own for at least three days, usually. Well, how about, how about let's see the magic of what you have in your kit. Okay. Let's, let's show everybody. Now, it's not all in order, so we'll just start showing some different things here. Okay. First, these are our first aid kits. Now, I stock a couple of different things on hand. This is like my real portable small first aid kit. Okay. So this is what goes on my back if I have to hoof it down the street and I've got to carry things in my back. This is inch and a half cloth tape, okay. really important. When you're out walking down the street, most people will get blisters. They're used to driving everywhere. Mm. You can tape your heels up before the skin breaks, before the blister happens. Uh. If you wait until the blister happens, then it's too late and you're going to have a real hard time walking. Okay. Okay. Inch and a half cloth tape. This right here is called an ace bandage. Mm -hmm. And if someone turns their ankle or if they have a major wound and they're bleeding, then the ace bandage can be wrapped around your hand, wrapped around an elbow, wrapped around an ankle, wrapped around a wound to help uh -huh. stop the bleeding. Okay. Valuable thing. I usually put at least two of those in there. Mm -hmm. This is a very small backpacking type first aid kit. This is light and compact. That is nice. And I put that in a backpack if I'm going down the street. Some bandages, that kind of stuff. Yeah, you know, Some first aspirin. aid cream, aspirin, mm -hmm. painkillers. Little, little packets. You can stuff whatever else, you know, you customize it for you your own personal things. probably medicine in here could go That's in here. That's correct. If you've got prescription medicines you need to take, you make sure you have a spare supply of those. Okay. Now this is a more comprehensive first aid kit. And this is in a waterproof box and it's very popular with river guides. And it's got all kinds of stuff in here, a lot more medicine. Mm -hmm. It even has the basics. If I had to stitch somebody up, it's got some matches, wow. spare things. And if I had to stitch somebody up. if some of this were dry. Okay, so you yeah. could stitch, stitch somebody up if you had to. I, if I have to, I could do it. You know, so this is a very comprehensive first aid kit oh, right wow. here. Very comprehensive. Now, did you get this as one whole kit that came as one unit? I bought that as one whole kit. This one comes from uh, Skyland Loot Backcountry Kit. Okay. So that's good serious medic kind of. Serious kit. stuff. All right. Now you want to have some spare clothing in your kit. This is a small compact sleeping bag and if you have a sleeping bag this is what's known as a fiber fill bag and so it's a polyester fiber fill. If this bag gets wet you know it's, if you fall into a river carrying it or something it's mm -hmm. totally drenched 
You can wring it out, you could crawl inside, and in five minutes you'd be significantly warm. Okay. If you had a down bag, which is known for its warmth, down is great when it's freezing cold, but if you got it wet, it's worthless, and you're going to sit there and shiver, and it won't do you any good at all. So okay. I like to have a little fiber fill bag on hand. Great. Now, you can also have blankets. Wool is warm. Polyester pile is warm. Cotton is terrible. Cotton is the worst okay. material in bad weather. Once it gets wet, it's pretty well worthless. You're going to freeze. If you get okay. wet in cotton clothing and it's cold yeah. weather, you're going to freeze. This is a little portable oh, combination cute? sort of disaster radio. And it's got a, you can hear the radio, you can crank it for power, you can crank it. It also has a solar cell on there, so you can just set it out in the sun and you can listen to the radio. And at night, you know, if your battery, it has room for batteries, mm -hmm. but if your batteries are dead, you can crank it and you can get the light out of it. So it's a nice handy wow. little gadget to have on hand. Also has a thermometer on there. <laughs> <laughs> now I, a I have a larger crank radio from a free radio from America. And uh, that's great because you can crank it for four or five minutes and it'll run for 10 or 15 minutes mm -hmm. on a spring. Mm -hmm. It's got mm -hmm. like a little internal generator. You, you wind up the okay. spring and it'll run. Okay. So that's called a free play radio and that's a much better quality radio than this but it's bigger and bulkier. Mm -hmm. So I might carry this in my backpack but the free play radio, that's like if I can throw it in my car, I'll take it. Uh -huh. If it's a backpack, I won't. Okay. Now this is a little, this is an optional item right here. And this is a little cook set. Mm -hmm. And I have a stove we'll get to in, somewhere in the bag. And this is sort of a compact cook set right here. So it's got a little pot holder so you can grab a pot off the fire or off your stove. Mm -hmm. Got a little metal cups, so the metal cups won't break, they won't shatter. And you can have your soup, you can eat out of these. That's correct. And this is a backpacking kind of it's kit. A, it's a backpacking kind of kit. Silverware. That's correct. Right? Now this is what we got here. This is a real cool portable stove. But again, this really? is this is a compact stove from MSR, and it's way cool the gas bottle becomes the gas tank and you just put a special cap in and it has a pump to pump up the stove and then your stove unfolds like this and then you hook this onto the gas bottle and then you set it down you pump it up and, and voila you, you've you, got a stove right there very compact, very lightweight. You can wow. boil water to purify water. You can melt snow to make water. Because if you're in the winter and, you try, mm -hmm. and you're freezing cold, the last thing you want to do is use your little bit of body heat that you got left to melt mm -hmm. snow. So this is a valuable thing to have. I consider it an optional item in your grab and run kit, but if it was up to me, I'd put it in there. You know, I'd, I've got it in mind. And it's lightweight. Yes, it's very, very lightweight, lightweight. Yes. very lightweight. Okay, now this is another optional item in the grab and run kit and in our part of the country mm. this is a valuable thing to have and this is, I, I call it a poor man's gas mask but what it really is is a painter's respirator and you pick them up at uh, Home Depot in the safety section in the tools. Or, or the local hardware store. Local hardware too. store, yeah. Right, right. Home Depot, Lowe's, local hardware store. Now what this will do is these are carbon canisters on there uh -huh. and they will filter out particulates. So in our area with wildfires, if you're having troubles breathing because of the, what's in the air, right. a lot of people wear those little masks right. that don't, you know, they're just light and they it do is. a little bit. But with these carbon filters, they're going to filter out all the noxious smells. They'll filter out gases that are toxic in, in what you're breathing. And they're going to also filter out the particles. So this does way more than the little dust mask that you put over your face. And in fact, if there was a terrorist act, or say you had a nuclear catastrophe, and you had, you know, like, like happened in Chernobyl and almost happened in Three Mile Island, with one of these masks, 
I would wear one of these masks while I was traveling through a contaminated area the entire time to prevent radioactive particles from lodging in your lungs. They would get filtered out by these carbon canisters yeah. in here. I didn't realize they could be that effective. Even yeah. against radiation. Wow. Very effective. I mean, it's not as good as a super space suit, but it's you can buy, anybody can buy this at your local hardware store. Right, yes. Now, here's a little cool flashlight. It's, a, it's an LED la flashlight. And when you buy a flashlight for your kit, they should always have LEDs. And normally, I also have a headlamp, but I use my headlamp all the time, and uh, I took it out of my kit. So you might want to... There's your lesson. Yeah, the lesson is the I should have two headlamps, so right. I've got my headlamp in my so kit all the time. So leave your hands free the to head, do what you need yeah, to do. Right. And an LED will use just a fraction of the power of a normal, traditional light bulb. So your LED bulbs will last way longer. They'll use far fewer batteries, and if you drop them on the ground, an LED bulb still works, but if you have a regular flashlight and the element is hot because it's been running and yeah. you drop it on the ground, usually the bulb is toast. So very good thing, nice. LED lights. So even though my headlamp is out of my kit, I still have an, a backup LED light in my kit. Oh, that's cute. You've got one that's gonna that's that sits up. That's right. You can sit it up to just provide light in a room, and uh, you can also turn it like this. So it's kind of like my headlamp. In other words, say I'm working on something, I can sit it up oh. and shine the light, and it leaves my hands free to to work on that. So it's kind of a cool little gadget there. Besides, it looks like R2-D2 or, right. or, or, or one of them, one of those little characters. Look at that, Luxo. Now this is what's called a space blanket, and it's basically kind of like a, a mylar aluminum foil, and it's a very compact oh. thing. It'll, prote it'll protect you from the rain, and it'll help hold a lot of body heat in, and it will cut the wind. So if you wrap yourself in this to sleep in it, or if you, you know, if it's raining, you can make it. You can make do as a makeshift raincoat, and it will help hold body heat in as well as keeping the rain and the wind out. Okay, beats it beats plastic because that silver mylar is going to tend to keep your heat in. That's is that right. right. That's right. Now this is a Camelback. This is basically a water bottle you can strap on your back, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it leaves your hands free, and this is a bite valve. So you put this on your back, and you can bite this and suck water out of it. So it's very helpful if you're being really active and you want to keep yourself hydrated. So this is a nice thing to have in your, in your kit. Now this is an example of some freeze-dried food, and a freeze-dried food Mm -hmm. This is a typical backpacker's meal, and the advantage of the freeze-dried food is it lasts for almost forever. I mean, it lasts for a number of years before it's no good, probably four or five years. Okay. And it's very lightweight. The disadvantage is there's no water in it. So the advantage is you can put it on your back, you can carry a lot of food without the weight because there's no water in it, but the disadvantage is... You have to find some you water. You have to find some water or it don't, isn't going to do you any good. In fact, if you're totally dehydrated, the last thing you want to do is eat dehydrated food. or it's gonna, It won't digest and it'll make your situation even worse. Mm. So you may be starving, but if you don't have any water, you better not eat this kind of food or okay. it'll just make it even worse. So, so it's one kind of food you could have on hand. That's for, correct. For some kinds of That's emergencies. Correct. Okay. You may want to have... Uh, I've got a bunch of things to deal with the water issue here, and we'll get into that in just a minute. Okay. Okay. Here's my little ditty bag, and there's a bunch of goodies in here. Now, this is dental floss, <laughs> and you might think, like, <laughs> okay, Do I'm in really an emergency. Are you going to floss your How teeth? Am I really going to floss my teeth? Right. <laughs> The reason I have dental floss in here is it makes really strong thread for sewing things. It's also good for tying things. See, primitive man basically lived by tying everything in his life was tied together with cordage. So dental floss is some oh, high strength, lightweight, thin but light but strong oh. cordage that you can use to stitch things up, 
You can use to tie things together, etc. So that's why the dental floss is there. Okay. Now here's something that you can do without, but most of us <laughs> would rather not. This is toilet paper. That's right. Yeah, that would be a nice convenience to have. Um, nice convenience to have <laughs> and note it's in a plastic bag. Yes, so you can keep... That's right, keeps it dry. Wet toilet paper isn't good for do, much. Do, doesn't get there. Now here's a compass. Mm -hmm. And some people say, well, why would I ever want a compass? You know, it's like I'm not out in the back country. But imagine now, if there's a horrendous fire going on, you can't see the sun, there's smoke everywhere, you're disoriented. The compass might be the only thing you've got uh, to point you and you say, well, I know I need to go north to get out of this town. Let me just tell you a quick story. I was skiing in the high Sierras in the middle of the winter by myself. I was trying to get to a backcountry cabin where I'd agreed to meet friends. And I'm used to having an excellent sense of direction. And I had my compass, but it was in my pocket and I had thick gloves on. When I pulled the compass out, the winds are swirling around me. I realized I was going 180 degrees in the wrong direction. And I thought, oh my God, I'm going totally the wrong way. Turned myself around, started going the right direction, put the compass back in my pocket. Five minutes later, pull the compass out of my pocket. Oh my God, I'm going 180 degrees the wrong direction again. The winds are swirling, it was dark. Mm. They were kept turning me around. So now I always have a string on my compass so that I can put it around my neck and I don't have to take gloves off, I can just look at it. The dial has a luminous bead on there so I can look at it even in the dark and say, okay, that's the way I'm supposed to go. String around the neck, compass, valuable thing. Okay. This is a sewing kit. I never travel in the back country without a sewing kit I once took a fall in the backcountry and the backpack strap, I was skiing in the middle of the winter and the strap on my pack tore out. I had a, about a 70 pound pack mm. and I was about 30 miles or 40 miles from where I needed to go. And if I didn't have a sewing kit, I would have been in major trouble. So what do we have in here? We've got thread, buttons, a nice pair of portable scissors, some big safety pins. Yeah, those can... And I will add that from my backpacking, what else is in there? Something else. A little thimble kind of thing. I always have a little bit of thin wire, needles, thin wire. Right. Thin wire, which can get strong, you know, when you need to connect with metal stuff along with this kind of stuff. And the and other thing I, use, I do for some my tape. kit generally, I have filament tape, not mm -hmm. just duct tape, mm -hmm. but I get the fiberglass filament, super strong tape. I wrap it around a little broken pencil. Mm -hmm. And I also tend to get some really super strong heavy duty thread and I wrap that into a little and I bring a little ball of that with me too in the back country. Now next oh, thing nice tool. there's a Leatherman this tool it's a multi-tool it has knives in there it has screwdrivers it has scissors and it has some needle nose That's pliers nice. so it's a very valuable tool to have with you. Yeah, I can't imagine. If you don't have that, of course, the Swiss Army knife. Swiss Army knife. Have I have some I, of that in yes. here. Swiss Army knife, Leathermans, those things all work great. Great tool. Good stuff. Yeah. Now, here's something that I include in my first aid mm. kit. Most people don't bring it, but I think it's real valuable. It's called tea tree oil. Yeah. And I found that tea tree oil will penetrate through skin that's sealed over a wound and you have an internal infection. And tea tree oil will penetrate through the skin and zap the infection in ways that I've never found a pharmaceutical will do it. You know, if you use Neosporin, it just doesn't cut it. Yeah. Tea tree oil will do it when Neosporin won't. So I always travel with some tea tree oil. This is some high altitude sun cream. Mm. It's mm. a sunblock that's very compact and very, very effective. This is some triple antibiotics, some Neosporin. Okay. A little toothpaste here. This stuff is mole very skin. important. Mole this skin. is mole skin. Yeah. This is great. You, it's very sticky stuff. You've got a sore spot on your heel or ankle, a blister. If you have a blister, you cut a little hole out from the mole skin right. uh, to cover the blister area itself so it surrounds it and it helps keep your keep your feet intact and, and let you travel even with sore feet. We have seven minutes. 
Okay, we're going to we're going to get into the water treatment now cuz that's the most important thing. Now, everybody most of us can survive a month without food. You may not like it, you may not be fun, and you may not believe it, but you can probably survive a month without food. But in hot weather, we would have a hard time after a single day without water. We'd be in major trouble. We would, most of us would be dead within three days without water. Wow. And in extreme heat, one day without water in the desert and you can be dead. I can, having been out and backpacking on a very hot day, that was getting water out of a muddy pond yes. was, was critical. Now, I like to have a variety of water treatment materials on hand, mm -hmm. and I'll give you those reasons. I'm, I've designed backcountry filters, and there's several reasons for that. No one thing is perfect in all situations. Now, this is probably one of the best all-around water filters, and the reason to have water filters is most of us will want a gallon of water a day per person. So that's eight pounds of water per person per day. If you have three days of water and a family of four, oh my. then you're talking over 100 pounds of water for three days. And you can't carry that unless you're in your vehicle, maybe. Right. In your vehicle, you can. But if you're going on your back and, you know, and it, or if the time extends longer than a couple of days, then you really need a way to treat water. Now, if there's an earthquake and you're in a city, you're going to be drinking out of the duck ponds. And that's not a very appealing thought. This is an, a backcountry filter from MSR. It has a ceramic outside to filter out bacteria. And the center core of this filter has a carbon cartridge. And the carbon absorbs bad tastes, bad odors, and poisonous chemicals from the water. Mm -hmm. So if I was, say, in New Orleans with Hurricane Katrina, I would feel fine taking this filter and taking this filter will screw onto the top of a water bottle. Oh, nice. So you can just take it and you put it on the top of your water bottle. Then drop you can take the end, drop it into the scum wherever. water, pump it up, uh -huh. and you have got a water bottle, a quart of water that tastes good, smells good, and is safe and isn't going to hurt you. Now, this is an a wonderful thing right here called Polar Pure. And this right here has crystals of iodine uh -huh. inside of it, mm -hmm. crystallized iodine. And what you do with this is you put, you fill it up with water and swish it around for about five or 10 minutes. And the iodine dissolves, a little bit of the crystals dissolves. Then you pour the liquid into your bottle mm -hmm. and then you let it mm -hmm. sit for 15 or 20 minutes. Or if it's really cold water for a half hour to 45 minutes, because the colder water doesn't purify as quickly. And it'll kill any viruses and any bacteria wow. in that water. Now, this is very compact, and this will treat about 2,000 quarts, 2,000 water bottles full out of this one little thing wow. before the crystals are dissolved. And when the crystals are totally used up, you just get some more crystals and put them in there, and you're off and running again. Now, you might say, well, if I've got a filter, why would I use this? The filter, a good filter will generally, filters that are designed to filter viruses out of water will, are so tiny mm. that they'll usually plug up very quickly. So if you filter some scummy water with a filter that's rated for viruses, your filter is probably going to be toast right. and no good. You, you use it two or three times and your expensive filter is so clogged. This covers the two different kinds of situations with right. three minutes. So this covers your viruses. So if you've got really scary water, then you zap it first with this to kill the viruses, and, and then you filter it through here to get rid of tastes and odors and chemicals. So you can double zap it between the two, and then you're sure you're fine. Here's a few more gadgets. This is a wonderful new invention called a SteriPen. This, what you do is you poke it into your water bottle, and you push the button, and there's an ultraviolet sterilizing lamp wow. in here. It will sterilize all the water in your bottle instantly in just a few seconds. You put it in there, you poke it, and, and it'll shine its light. And then as soon as the light stops blinking, then you know it's sterilized. Downside, so this is great. If you've got clear water, this works perfectly. Mm -hmm. Then you don't have to pump through a filter. You don't have to treat it with chemicals that don't taste good. And in 30 seconds, you've got purified water. Great for Montezuma's Revenge, great for other things, but no good for the scummy duck pond water because it's not clear enough 
for the light inside the there to do its job. Okay. Okay. This is a great backup thing. This right here is a sports bottle with a bacterial water filter on it. So you fill up your sports bottle, and then the sports bottle becomes the pump for your filter. And the water's filtered through there. Mm -hmm. It's good, safe water. It's got a carbon filter. It won't last nearly as long as that big pump filter will. Yeah, this one. But it's simple. It's compact. You can put it in a belt, go running, dip it into a water on your backcountry, you know, on a little long-distance run, take a drink, not be worried you're going to get sick. Really great thing to have on hand. Our last minute. Okay. There is something called... Cryptosporidium, which is a, a small amoeba-like thing that made a half a million people sick in Milwaukee in the 90s, and it killed something like 400 people in the city from Cryptosporidium. Nasty bug. It turns out that chlorine in your water systems does not kill Cryptosporidium. Mm -hmm. Cryptosporidium is easily filtered out by the filters. But these chemicals right here, if you want a light little chemical, this Aquamira is, is one of the few things that will kill it. Chlorine, typical halozone tablets, won't kill cryptosporidium. This Aquamira will kill it, will kill any bugs in the water. Anything and everything will get killed by this. Good okay. stuff. In our last 30 seconds, I'm going to say we've got most everything, right? And what I'm really, really noticing is I mean, you're also going to bring your clothing. You're also going to bring some cash. You're also going to bring, you know, your eyeglasses and things that are personal for that kind of thing. Your vital papers, perhaps. Pharmaceutical medicines. Right. Yeah. So that um, you've got those things that are personally. And you can put them all in a bin, I want to just say. Or you've kept it in your backpack. Yes. And, and we are, we're done. We're done. We're done. It's like. Thank you so much for just this whistle stop tour <laughs> of what to think about in your grab and go kit. My yeah. website has all the details, Thank you. and my book, When Technology Fails, has all the details for grab and run kits and an emergency preparedness plan for you and your family. It's like insurance, you hope you never need to use it. But you thank God you spent a little bit of time and a little bit of money to put it together if the situation ever arises when you got to have it. you got to have it when you got to have it. Great. Thank you. You're watching Peak Moment, Community Responses for a Changing Energy Future. I'm Jenea Donaldson. My guest is Matt Stein, and he's prepared. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again.